my heartly thanks to Dr. Vansi Sabu uh, for you know giving this opportunity to speak on this desk. And what I will speak is a uh, U-turn of cardiovascular outcome trial in diabetes treatment. Do we really need them? Uh, let me start with the US FDA's mission. They have the dual mission. One is protecting the public health by ensuring the safety and efficacy of newer products and simultaneously advancing the public health by helping to speed the innovation that make the medicine make it more effective, more safer and more affordable. Now this more affordable was the statement. What was happened uh, before 2008? Any newer medication in type 2 diabetes, they were coming for approval. Uh, they were based on improvement in glycemia, based on HbA1c improvement. As UK PDS has stated that uh, uh, improve the HbA1c, your microvascular complications are going to be improved and safety profile demonstration on phase 2 and 3 data. So, in that time, before 2008, whatever the trials were conducted for the newer drugs, they were of uh, uh, 6 months duration around and then extension for open label period and typically they enroll the patient with the short history of diabetes only and existing cardiovascular disease was often an exclusion criteria during that time and in 2007, the meta-analysis of rosiglitazone came and it suggested that in rosiglitazone there was 43% increase in myocardial infarction, 64% increase in death because of cardiovascular disease and that is you know uh, just make a U-turn in field of diabetes and in July 2008 the FDA's endocrinologic and metabolic drug advisory committee they voted in 40 to 2 in favor of recommending long-term cardiovascular safety trial or other equivalent evidence to rule out unacceptable cardiovascular risk for all new glucose lowering agents. So, let me just clarify uh, what was the difference between this cardiovascular outcome trial and traditional trial. So, traditional trial they were aimed for demonstrating benefit that this drug is going to give you the benefit. But cardiovascular trial, the aim was to demonstrate the cardiovascular safety. So again, traditionally, uh, the treatment was versus the comparator. But again, there is a downfall in cardiovascular outcome trial. The molecule was compared against the placebo. And how the trial was goes on, uh, traditionally, uh, there was no treatment adjustment allowed. And the difference was looked upon traditionally between the two arms to molecules or to treatment and if there is significant reduction in the outcome versus comparator was there or not that was studied. But in cardiovascular outcome trial, they, they allowed to adjust the treatment to keep the HbA1c at one certain level, uh, acceptable uh, level and in target and non-inferiority versus the placebo was studied and to show that there was no unacceptable increase in cardiovascular risk versus placebo. So, this was the main component of that 2008 FDA guidance that outcome trial must exclude hazard ratio of 1.8 pre-approval, 1.3 post-approval. Patient selection should include high-risk population including elder, those with advanced cardiovascular disease, some degree of renal impairment, duration must be of 2 years. Uh, they require cardiovascular event to be considered, cardiovascular mortality, myocardial infarction and stroke, optional cardiovascular events such as hospitalization for acute coronary syndrome or urgent revascularization uh, procedure was included and events must be adjudicated in blinded and independent process. So it was like that. If uh, pre-approval, you know, pre-marketing, you are able to show the hazard ratio of less than 1.3, okay, you do not require post-marketing study. But if your hazard ratio is crossing 1.3, but it is less than 1.8, you need to have post-marketing study to show the cardiovascular safety and hazard ratio of 1.3 or less. And if your hazard ratio is crossing 1.8, you are not allowed further. After that, a series of cardiovascular outcome trial, we all are witness, they have changed the way we are practicing the medicine, way we are practicing diabetes management. 
there are still few more ongoing CVOTs are there on the board. But what we want to know, what are we learning from this cardiovascular outcome trials? Are there the limitation of this CVOTs which currently are designed? And what are the further alternative policies that we can think of? Let's see. So initially, our diabetes management was glucose centric. Now, we are focusing from glucose centric to become cardio glucose centric. So again, cardiovascular risk is coming into the management. All the guidelines, all the guidelines, they are just focusing how, what is the severe risk of the patient because most of our patient, two third of our diabetic population, they are having cardiovascular disease, adverse cardiovascular event. And just shifting this focus can result in dramatic reduction in morbidity and mortality. Here I have just summarized a few uh, CVOT trials of DPP-4 inhibitors showing as Sir has suggested a, a very innocent drug. He is uh, this, well, just doing their own work, nothing to harm for anything. GLP-1 receptor agonist trials CVOT is showing a good benefit for cardio protection and other benefits also. SGLT CVOT is again shown tremendous benefit and these are again you know open the era and change all the things. So what we learn from these all CVOTs is again DPP4 inhibitors, no evidence of cardio protection but neutral effect on hospitalizer for heart failure and there is modest renal benefit. GLP1 receptor agonist, cardio protection with subcutaneous and long acting GLP1 receptor agonist but inconclusive evidence for short acting or oral long acting medication. Uh, this GLP1 receptor agonist has soon potential reduction in hospitalization due to heart failure and evidence for some renal benefit. NCLT2 inhibitors again, cardio protection is there. There are evidence for reduced risk for hospitalization for heart failure. Evidence for renal benefit is there. Both the GLP1 receptor agonists and SGLT2 inhibitors, they have evidence for reduced all cause mortalities and that has changed the uh, way we have practiced and that is, uh, you know, uh, make all the guidelines to consider this. If uh, we have a people living with diabetes with us, we must first look upon their complication profile. We must look upon what is atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease risk, what is heart failure risk, what is the kidney risk and based on that you need to choose the anti-diabetic agent. And they, all the guidelines, if you take ADA, ACC, EASD or ESC, they are emphasizing to putting upon ahead uh, GLP receptor agonist or SGLD2 inhibitor. So this is what I have summarized is ESD, ADA, ACC, uh, ESC guidelines recommended GLP receptor agonist or SGLD2 inhibitors in type 2 diabetes with cardiovascular disease. If we look upon other metabolic benefit apart from glycemic benefit that we are able to achieve with all the OHA, all the glucose lowering agent, if we are looking for weight loss, again GLP receptor agonist and SGLT inhibitor we should consider. If we want to minimize hypoglycemia risk, again we have thiazole and inadions with DPP4, SGLT inhibitors and GLP receptor agonists. And saving the lives, increasing the uh, overall life and improving all cause mortality again ACC and ESC grey guideline prefer the agent with poor mortality benefit and that are amphagliflozin, liraglutide and oral semaglutide but what are the limitation of this cardiovascular outcome trials yeah first which I said comparator groups it is not compared with any active drug it is compared with the placebo trial population is different across all the cardiovascular outcome trials so the generalization of applicability of all the trials to all the population, oh, we cannot. And trial outcomes studied were different in different CVOT trials. Some trials were having three point maze, some trials were having outcome of four point maze. So issues are, of course, cost because doing uh, this much of long term CVOT is, requires uh, much, much investment. Clinical resources utilization, huge resources utilization and that results in delays in regulatory approval. Uh, question mark on generalizability of current cardiovascular outcome trials. Duration of studies, again some trials were studied for 2 years, some for 5 years. Choice of comparator, there is no still. And as I said, outcome components are different in different CVOTs. So we have further more opportunities for the improvement. So what the recommendation is, 
we may go for or, or, or the authorities should look for lower risk, more diverse population, which includes, uh, you know, uh, people with uh, uh, no risk of cardiovascular disease or very minimal risk for cardiovascular disease because this then we, we, may, we may be able to applicable for uh, general population. Long term follow up is required. So, trial design should pre specify that long term follow up should be included and the consent should be taken in that form. Some uh, new consent procedure to permit the lifelong follow up of the patient and some strategies to improve the adherence of the patient for the therapy that should be there. Active comparator uh, rather than having the placebos for this CVOT should be advocated, but again. We must have a uh, thorough knowledge of the active comparator and their uh, cardiovascular impact. Then only we will be able to, you know, compare both the agents. Though uh, till date we have a uh, good uh, knowledge for this CVOT trials. Some innovative designs which can include all and standardization of definition for CVOT outcomes. So it should be uniform for all the CVOT trials. Then only we can compare. Modification of endpoint analysis. Suppose we are not able to have the primary endpoint analysis, we must be able to consider secondary endpoint analysis, and that should be Please applicable. It. Yeah, it will be. And uh, advanced efficiency and cost saving options. Again, as I said, it's much much costlier to have this CVOTs. So, cost effective trials must be there. So, we may have to involve, you know cost setting option among the pharmaceuticals government and other organization and that's why 2018 FDA advisory committee has suggested and they have thinked upon this though uh, voting was 10 raised to 9 in favor of again recommendation to exclude unacceptable increase in CVOT risk cardiovascular risk for all new glucose lowering therapy but the process of approval which was two step 1.8 and 1.3 rather now they are coming to have one step process to making the upper bound limit of 1.5 uh, uh, for the uh, approval and again uh, one more study one more thing that cardiovascular outcome trial study design should be in that way uh, so that we can utilize uh, rather health networking data or more and more EMRs more and more statistical data so that this long term follow up uh, and long term cost which may not be there. So, five potential priorities continue to demonstrate the CV safety is required, establishing cardiovascular superiority is should be there. Uh, we should uh, focus on safety, efficacy and outcome in understudied population like CKD, heart failure and without established CV disease rather than focusing only on cardiovascular uh, established disease population. and assessing the effect of combination of uh, new glucose lowering agents and head to head comparison should be there. So, this was what we can have is you know we may have long duration, we may consider rather than metformin as a first line therapy, whatever study you are doing that drug should be the first line therapy and accordingly we should go ahead to, to summarize cardiovascular outcome trial in diabetes has changed the way we are practicing approach is now as I said moving towards a cardio glucose centric approach and still the limitations are there that makes newer medicine to come late in the market and which are not widely adaptable applicable for all the population cost and over utilization of clinical resources these are the major challenges and so newer ways and innovative design must be applied and here I conclude thanks